please go and love your enemies. Go and love your exes. Go and do good to people who cheated you with finances. Go and be good to them in the name of Jesus. Hate no one but love all people in the name of Jesus. We're going to cross the line in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Come, you're going to cross the line. Come. People, stand, stand that side, please. That side. This is the line of self-denial. The people who speak behind your back, you're going to make sure that you forgive them. You're not going to grant yourself the fleshly privilege of calling them names back. So you're not going to repay evil for evil, but you're overcome, going to overcome evil by doing good. Amen? Are you ready to do that? The people who call your names, your opposition. Are you ready to be good to them? And you're ready to deny your flesh where you want to call them back names. You're ready, you're ready to deny that. Then you can cross the line. Come, I take you. Here's the line. I know God knows a situation. Betty, is jij gereed om jezelf te verloen? Kom. You are ready to deny yourself and fleshly privilege because we speak about human rights. Fleshly rights. Fleshly rights. Someone call your name so you can call him back names. Huh? When you deny these rights, you'll start to see signs and wonders in your life, in your business, your practice. You understand? You understand? Are you ready to cross the line? Come, I help you. Jesus' name. Are you ready to cross the line? You know what God is speaking to you about? You know. You know very clearly. Come. You're ready to cross this line. You, will, you don't want revenge anymore. So God is speaking. So you also forgive. Is that okay? Pray with me, Lord Jesus, I forgive. In Jesus' name. I will not take revenge. But I will live in your spirit. And I forgive. In Jesus' name. I want to take you over. Come, help. Come. I take you over this line, okay? This is the line of self-denial. When we deny ourselves, we become like Jesus. Thank you. You can go. The line of self-denial. Come. Where is your husband? And but, but you got that man's daughter. You have took two kids from him. You don't hear anything about him. Nothing. So you'll cross the line. You must pray for that man. He's in trouble. He's in trouble. There's another man, your partner, that's supposed to be your, become your partner. He passed away. God's going to give you a new partner. Don't worry. Hallelujah. There was a partner be lined up for you, but this partner didn't do God's will. And he opened doors and he passed away. So God will give you a new partner. Don't worry. 
But don't be glad because your partner passed away. You say, what partner? You don't know about him. God lined up for you someone. And you prayed a lot. So this partner didn't, it's not, it's not, it's, it's not going to come because he passed away. But God will do a new thing in Jesus' name. Friend, what type of business are you doing? Where you work? You're a teacher. You got, you're involved in no business. You plan some business. What business do you plan? Huh? In this, no. And your partner? You, you had a partner. Huh? You had a partner or not? Your wife. But there was another partner that God was lining up for you. Because you sit with this business idea, it doesn't come to pass completely. It's still hanging in the air. So God was lining someone up for you, but God cannot make choices for people. So that man, um, he didn't line up completely with God. He passed away. So your prayers has been hindered now because of that man not lining up. You don't know him, but he was on his way. God was about to reveal him to you. But your prayers got hindered because he did not line up. So that's why your things were hanging in the air. You know what I talk about. You know what I talk about, business-wise. But now there's another partner coming that's going to wake away for you. There's coming another one. I, I want you to see why your prayers have been hindered. God lined up a partner for you, but he didn't line up. God wanted to line him up. He would have been the perfect one. But he didn't line up, and that's why your promises have been hindered for some time. You understand what I say? But now he's gone. But there's another one that God raised up, and he will make a way for you. Amen. So I pray for you for wisdom and grace. Your, your wife is your partner. She's a very good partner. But God will bring someone to you that will make a way for you. Come and stand on the line, please. But you also need to cross the line of self-denial, okay? Is that okay? You stand here, turn around. Are you ready to deny yourself completely? So you become, can become what God has meant for you to be? Are you excited now? Okay, you can cross the line. Let me help you. Thank you, Jesus. Denial. I mean, now you'll become... What Jesus has meant for you to be in the name of Jesus. Give your Jesus hand. Amen. Come on. Hou yourself rein en saver. Moe nie betrokke raak by conflict waar jy nie moet betrokke raak nie. Amen. As jy reg om jouself te verloon, dan staan nog bykie terug. As jy 100% reg, om net Jesus te wees, vir allemaal om jou. Selfs die wat jy dink, is nie soke goeie mense. Jy reg. So jy gaan net goed oor ander mense te sê. Goed, kom, gaan oor die lijn. Thank you Jesus. This morning it's time to cross the line. Hallelujah. Come, are you ready to cross the line? Don't stand behind. Ready to cross the line. Are you ready to cross the line? Don't stand behind the line. God will surround you with good friends and good people. Because you're waiting for something that's not coming to pass. Because the, the people that had, that had to help you failed. They had to make a way for you, but they failed. But now God will surround you with good people. But are you ready to cross the line of self-denial so that you can become what Jesus wanted you to be? You're ready for that? Come, cross the line. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord, I release on her success, business, and wealth in the name of Jesus. 
Are you ready to cross the line? Come. Your enemies will become your friends. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor Dan. Where is Pastor Dan? Your family will come back. Stand that side, please. Your family will come back. But are you ready to deny yourself? Huh? Completely. Come. Did you hear what I say? Your family will come back. You hear what I say? You understand that? Huh? You understand that? Your family will come back. You believe that? Now you deny yourself completely. Amen. Come. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God's going to do something for you. There's a new life waiting for you. Come. Go and stand that side there and across the line. Be with her. Thank you. Never get involved in something as God is, if God is not involved in that thing. Where he is involved, you're involved. Deny yourself all the privilege of your selfishness. Cross the line. Because God's got something new for you. When you have been disappointed by a man, and you're a woman, don't say, never again. Never is a long time. <laughs> Because God's got good things in mind. Give him a hand. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Go and cross the line, please. That far corner there. Go and cross the line there. Don't say as a woman, Hey, this man disappointed me. Never again. Because never is a long time. Amen. God's got something good for you. Okay? Stand there. Stand there. You can cross the line now. Thank you. Hallelujah. Come here, please. It's time for self-denial so that you can become what Jesus meant for you. Stand there and cross the line. Thank you. Come, please. Go and stand here. Don't worry. Something new is coming. You see, you can never get hold, take hold of what God's got in mind for you if you do not deny yourself. Very important principle in God's kingdom. Amen. Abraham had to deny himself and go and sacrifice this promised son that God has given him. Very difficult situation. Then only when he made that decision, he could become the father of of all who believe on the face of the earth today. You know what the great honor that is? To be the father of all who believe? But he had to deny himself and give up what was precious to him. He had to give up what was so precious to him, the promised son. Then after he almost did it, but God stopped him. God said, now I know that you will withhold nothing from me. And he became the father of all who believe. Every single person on the earth today that believe in God is a spiritual son of Abraham. You see, you've got to give up. You've got to give up. You've got to deny yourself in order to take hold of the promises. You understand that? You can cross the... You, you know what I say now. It's in your, in, your, in your case. Cross the line, please.
Go and cross the line there, please. Sharon, but I've got to give you something before you cross the line. This bread and wine is so important because it represents the sin, the flesh of Jesus who never sinned. And the blood of Jesus, his blood was shed so your sins might be forgiven. I've got to give it to you. Come and stand this side. You need to be here. Please, in the name of Jesus, take this bread. Something's going to happen in your life. Take this. You can cross the line. Something's going to happen in life that can amaze, amaze a whole family. I know what it is, but I'm not going to tell you. You will see it when it happens. Please come. Thank you. You so desire for a breakthrough. And the things that you want does not come. You've got such a great desire to, be, to experience a love, the love of God, the love of God. And sometimes you want to love like that, but you don't get that love back. But be ready to sacrifice that love this morning, and you'll see what the Lord do. You desire a real love. And you, you gave everything to get that real love, and you didn't get that real love, true? So now if you sacrifice that desire for love, God's love will come to you. Because you were looking for love at the wrong places. Okay? So today you will deny yourself that privilege to have that love the way you want it. Is that okay? Pray with me, Lord Jesus. Thank you that I can sacrifice today my great desire for love. In Jesus' name. For your love. Come cross the line. Thank you. You always got to give up something to give some to get something greater. Okay? You need to give up popularity and fame to get God's purpose for your life. Come and stand on the line because fame and popularity is knocking on your door. Knocking and keep on knocking when you know the truth and keep on knocking and keep on knocking. The devil keep on with his nonsense. But if you want to, do not deny that you hold it. God will not hold it against you. But you will not get what he has meant for you. God is not spiteful. He doesn't say, okay, you didn't want to deny yourself. I'm going to keep my promises from you. That's not your God. But if you do not cross that line of self-denial, you will never taste what He actually had in mind for you. If you want it your way, you will have it your way. But you will not have it God's way. You will have it, but not God's way. I say again, if you want it your way, you'll have your way. But you will never have it God's way. And the people who have it God's way, as people who, sh who shook the earth, and it made a big difference like the man Abram. We cannot argue today that we know that he was a man, a simple man, who made an enormous difference in the human race and the salvation of the human race. But if he didn't went up that mountain to sacrifice that son, he would have come back and he will not even know what he lost. He will just stay, would have stayed 
an insignificant, simple man, not even having that impact on the human race. Are you ready to sacrifice fame and popularity? Come across the line. Come across the line. You never know. You can be a history maker and a planet shaker if you deny yourself. But you see, your flesh is screaming for self-gratification in many, many ways. If a man wants his revenge, he can have his revenge, but he will never have it God's way. And sometimes of the strongest attacks of the enemy is when he wants to force you and tempt you to have it your way. Because you know if you got it your way, you have it. But you will never have it God's way. So you'll not be a history maker and a planet shaker. Abraham was a history maker and a planet shaker because he took the promised child and went up the mountain to obey God to sacrifice that son. And because he passed that test, God didn't allow him to sacrifice that son because it was ungodly. So God stopped him. And God said to him, now I know that you will withhold nothing from me. And he became a history maker. And a planet shaker. People love the, uh, to have their revenge. All humans are like that. Or they have love self-gratification. You know, people who feed their bodies well, they eat every day a fine steak and potato chips at the spur and wherever they go. It's good. They can have it their way. But they are not the demon outcasters. But those who fast and pray and deny themselves the big, nice, fat steak, they become the dead raisers. Give Jesus a hand. Amen. <laughs> Nothing wrong with a big, fat, nice steak and chips. Nothing wrong. You can have it every day. But those who deny that and fast is the ones who raise the dead and cast out the demons. Amen. Pastor, don't you ever eat a steak? Ah, every now and then. I, my wife makes me every night one. Don't worry. Amen. But I speak about gratitude. There's some things that you deny, need to deny yourself of in order to get God's best. Amen. To hang around, you get many pastors in town. They hang around at this place and this place and this place. And they sit there and everyone greet them and they eat their nice steaks and chips and doing, drink their coffees and do their nice things there. It's good. But then you will never see the dead getting raised. Never see demons cast out. Because spur cannot cast out demons. Neither can Mike's kitchen raise the dead. But those who fast and pray and seek the Lord with all their heart, they will do these things. There's always something you need to give up. And if you don't give up, God's not going to hold it against you. He will never because he's not a spiteful God. But you will never become what he actually meant for you to be. You see, you need to deny yourself and refrain and put a tight rein on your tongue so that you don't gossip against the people that you dislike. And if you go on speaking evil about them, you can have your way. But you will never see the greater things that God had in mind for you. 
Keep on speaking evil of the people that you dislike. Speak, speak, speak. Go, go, go. But you will never see the greater things that are in your mind for you. Thank God he's not spiteful. But it's not he will deny you the greater things. It's you. Because you could not say to the self, say no to the self-gratification of the flesh. Hallelujah. 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 There's always something that you need to give up in order to get the greater things of God. Some fleshly thing. Some fleshly way. Amen. Pray, Lord Jesus, grant me this grace, please, to see where I need to see, to deny myself in Jesus' name. Denying the self-gratification of the flesh, of calling other people's name, people that you dislike, you say, hey, that one is a loser. That one, hey, don't, don't. <clears throat> you allow yourself the privileges of the of, uh, unruly tongue to say what you want to say about others. You can do so. You can have your way. But you will never taste the greater things of God that he had in mind for you. Well, let me tell you, I've denied myself. I'm waiting for the best. Give God a hand. Amen. I, I know my, my, the greatest season of my life is still coming. And it's not about me. It's about this ministry. The greatest things are still coming. Give Jesus a hand. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said to me one day, if you can deny this and this and this, and this, then he showed me a vision of what will happen. Let me tell you, for a couple of years, I was unable to deny a couple of things. Not many things. One, two, one and a half. One and a half. But I tell you, I did that. And I'm waiting for the best. Give Jesus a hand. Amen. <laughs> there was a man, A.A. Allen, who was a normal man. A, a USA guy, A.A. Allen. He was a cross between, uh, his mother was an a, a Indian-American prostitute and a drunkard and alcoholic. His father was just a loose man that was looking for a prostitute. He never knew he was who his father was. His father was a white man. This American Indian woman gave birth to a son. From a young age, he was feeding him with alcohol to make him to sleep in his titi bottle. She was a complete alcoholic. Completely, totally alcoholic. He became a street, a street kid from a very young age. Total, complete alcoholic. What can happen to such a guy? But he got saved. A certain woman was preaching in a Methodist church. Evangelist woman. And he came to salvation in that meeting. God led him to that church. Drunkard. He was even drunk going to the church. He gave his heart to Jesus. And then he was desiring the greater things of God. You know, you get deep and you get deeper and you get deepest. He was desiring the deepest of God. But he knew his life was so full of weaknesses and fleshly desires, the way that he grew up. And then God said to him also one day, if you can lay down the certain things that I will show you, you'll get the greater things. He went into his prayer closet, but he was such a weak Christian. He couldn't even fast. So he went in fasting, and then very, very early, he will shout to his wife to open the door because he told his wife to lock the door so they don't get to the food. <laughs> but eventually, he did what God wanted him to do. He fasted, and he prayed. And as he fasted, he couldn't even fast. But eventually, he denied his flesh, and he was fasting by God's grace. And as he was fasting, God gave him 12 points that he needed to tick off 
And then God said to him, if you can lay down these 12 points, you'll see the greater works of God. And God showed him as he was fasting, he could never see those points if he didn't deny his flesh the food that he so loved. He was just a normal man. And then when he was fasting, God showed him the 12, 12 points, and he started to write, he wrote them all down. And then he said, God, now grant me the grace to take them out of my life. And God granted him the grace. And he said with his own words, he mentioned them all in his books, except for two. He's too ashamed to mention them. And then he said in his book, he was ticking them off one by one, one by one. And when it came to the last two, it was very difficult. That's the things that he was too ashamed to mention. But eventually, God granted him grace to tick off those two as well. And when he ticked off the last one, he worshiped God and said, Lord, thank you that I can now trust you for the greater things. And lo and behold, the greater things came. The greatest miracles that ever happened in modern day time happened in that, that man's ministry. The one case was a, a, a child that was brought that almost had every sickness and disease. Blind, deaf, mute, lame. And a certain woman came and she carried this child in. It was a wreck of a child. The feet was loose, blind, deaf, mute, something wrong with the stomach, something wrong with the heart. The child could not talk. The woman was carrying in this child. One of the greatest modern day miracles. But this woman was very poor. So she came to the meetings and she paid her last money to get there. And she was sitting in a meeting, just enough money to get back to her house. And when they took up the offering, I.A. Allen was speaking about the gift of faith or a seat of faith, a seat of faith. And that night, God said, tonight you're going to give money which you cannot afford to give, and you will see your miracle. And she sat with the money that she had to go back to her house and said, Lord, if I cannot give this money, but if I give this money, please, can you heal my child? And she was sowing that seed. She didn't know how she was going to get back. That's a seed of faith. No money left, nothing. And then she was waiting for the man of God to come to her. He didn't come to her. Said to her, to, oh, this appointment can easily knock on your door. Don't settle for that. She was still waiting. Then she said to a man that's still alive, who's far over 80, Shambak. She said to Shambak, his helper, please tell him, I need him. But before Shambak went to her, Sham A.A. Allen came to this woman. He took this wrecked child in his arms and he started to pray. And as he prayed, one of the biggest modern day miracles happened. The mute, blind, deaf, crippled, child that that's, kidneys is not working, liver is not working properly, properly, was in his hands completely, totally healed. How could this happen? Because that man was ticking off the things that God showed him. He needed to deny himself of. Give your Jesus hand. Amen. <laughs> Abram could have never become the father of all who believe if he didn't obey God and denied himself. He went up the mountain to, to, ready to sacrifice that son that God said to him he needed to sacrifice. Then God said to him, now I know that you will hold, withhold nothing from me. You need to get to a place where you can say, when, where God will say about you, now I know that you will withhold nothing from me. You can have it your fleshly way. God's not going to be angry at you, but you will deny yourself the greater things of God for your life. You can go, up, go, go on gossiping and call people names. You can go, do it. You can carry your grudges. God is not, God's not going to hate you because he's the God of love. But you 
will deny yourself the greater things that he had in mind for you. Whatever God wants you to do, he will grant you the grace to do so. Give him a hand. Amen. Today it's time for miracles. It's time for breakthrough. Because you have denied yourself in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're all people. We're all people. But I just remember when me and my wife went out. I'm a normal man. She's a normal woman. We have been at that point of time 29. We had strong sexual urges. Me. Can I speak for her? Very, very strong. I'm a man. But I knew it was wrong before marriage. So I withheld myself. We kissed, etc., 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 like your normal young people do. Young, if a man does not do those things, he's not normal. But I didn't cross the line. I denied my flesh. Because I knew if I cross that line and gratify my flesh, I will never taste the greater things of God. And I didn't cross that line. I only had sexual intercourse with my wife after we got legally married. Give Jesus a hand. Amen. Let me tell you, I was a very, 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 very normal man. It was difficult. But I decided I will obey the Lord and I will not cross that line. If I crossed that line and I lived in self satisfaction gratification, I would have not been here today. I would have not been here today. So don't throw away the greater things that God's got in mind for you and settle for second best. Fleshly ways, second best. But deny yourself. Give Jesus a hand. Amen.